If you recall on an earlier video, we had a problem with an AdWest steering box. I'll put the link in the top corner here. And this is the one, and seeing it's very cold outside again, it's another one of those minus 15 days, so we've got nothing really to do. Um, I'm going to strip this down. I'm going to take the opportunity to strip it down. Um, and without using any special tools. Now the biggest problem I can see so far is getting this big nut off here, this, this adjuster nut. Well getting the locking ring off isn't, doesn't pose really much of a problem, you just tap that round and it will come off. You see? How do we get the nut out? Well, it shouldn't be all that tight, but for now you, well, you need a special tool, and I have one somewhere, and I can't find it. I've put it down somewhere, I can't find it. So what I'm going to use is a, one of these, like, I don't know, it came from Canadian Tire. It's a, it's a pipe wrench type. Th it's a, an adjustable spanner, which you can turn the jaw around to become anything you want, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in there, because this shouldn't, in theory, be very tight. And I'm going to turn this with another adjustable, and there you go. So we can get into that. That's good. So what I'm going to do, because I'm not very familiar with these boxes, because, as I say, I've had so much bad luck with them before, I printed out the workshop manual in this case, printed off a few sheets, and um, I'm going to do it the way they say in the book, All right, because there are some special uh, uh, things you've got to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow uh, like page by page. You see, there's a the special tool you're supposed to have, you see. You need a special C-spanner and a special nut. I hope you can see that to go inside there. I don't think you do. So first of all, I'm going to give a quick read of this. I'm going to do this real time so that we can uh, go through it all together and see what's wrong with it. See if I can get this uh, valve block, this valve assembly out. I don't need to do anything else. I don't. The seals weren't leaking, so I don't really need to do much except for get this piece out. So let's have a go. So I'm going to pause now, have a look through my notes and, and come back step by step. So what it says is we've got to turn this ring here to, to be just about, what do they say here, half an inch from the end of the hole. There's a little hole on the side here. You can see I've got my punch in. And that will allow us to get the ring out. So we also, it says also we need a screwdriver, which we've got here. So where's a screwdriver? So let's do this in real time and see what happens. So I'm going to punch the ring round. Whoops. Did I knock you out of the way there? Nope. So I'm going to knock the ring round till it's half an inch from there. A bit more. And then I'm going to put a punch in here. There, you can see you can see the ring sprung up a little bit. Get my screwdriver and pull this out. Now, be very careful because it is a spring clip. I'm going to also push my punch under there so it doesn't fall out and then very carefully just ease this ring out and put your hand over it when you're doing springs be really careful because they can ping into your eyes not a good day spoil your day so there we go that's the ring out and I'm going to put it you remember these boxes that we had see how handy they are so I'm going to pause now and see what it says for the next bit honestly this is just the way I would do it and you would do it so here we go so next it says, we have to turn the steering, this is a left hand drive, so we've got to turn the steering to a full left hand lock to extract the piston. Um, on a right hand drive you turn it to full right hand lock to extract the piston. So in hindsight, I've put the oil collection bin here, because I think we're going to have fluid everywhere, let's see. So there we go, we'll turn it to left lock. Not exactly yet. Oop. And there we go, the ends come out, you see? And indeed, like the good boy scouts, be prepared for the oil going everywhere. So, 
I'm going to clean all these bits up, but for now I'm just, that's why I always use paper, you know, because that fell in the oil bucket. That wasn't very good. You must make sure everything is scrupulously clean and steering. At this stage it doesn't matter because, well, we don't know if it's going to work or not, to be honest. So there's the cover off. There we go. That's the end cover. Now, this has been rebuilt once, this steering box, apparently, allegedly. So, and it didn't leak, so I, I assume everything's okay. So now I'm going to get this bin out of the way, because obviously it's empty. We'll see what it says next. Next it says, we've got to take this little grub screw out of here, and undo this nut here. And take all the contents out. Now, this has already been set from the... Uh, how do we say, the reconditioners and they've put a little dob of yellow paint on there but for me, I'm going to use a little punch because no doubt by the end of the day all that paint will have come off uh, another little top tip you've got to print, a, print out the sheets you want in, in, you know, if you've got a, a workshop manual it's, it's nice to scan the pages out because then if they get all dirty and oily well, you're not getting your book all dirty. I've seen many workshop manuals ruined because of that. Now, these should be metric. Uh, I think it is. I'm not sure. It's a bit loose. Anyway, it's coming out. It wasn't very tight. And I think this has got a special end on it. No, oh, it has, but it's come off. It's supposed to have a little cap inside there, so there's something to repair. I'm going to put that in the box. To get that out, I'm simply going to use my punch to punch this round. It's not that tight, so... Oh, get my, oh, my snap-on screwdriver out. Just hold on. This is a chance to use it. Look, this is my... This is the only snap-on tool I have. And I, I only have that because I found it under a bonnet of a car in a scrapyard. So there we go. We'll take that out. Now if you see inside there, there's a, a disc, and what the heck's that? That's some grease. Yeah, some sort of grease in there. Anyway, we'll put that in the box, and then wipe our hands, and then we're going to see what it says on the next page. So the next thing we're instructed to do is take this locking nut off here and these four bolts here. Now this is 19mm and I think this is 15 Yep. So first of all we're going to take this locking nut off. I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to use a, an impact gun just to speed, speed the job up a bit. Push that off. Put that into there. Put the socket on the right way around. Put the socket on the right way around. They weren't very tight. Oh dear me. Nothing. While I've got these out here, never be afraid to bend spanners. I got this one, I bent this 19mm to go on a left hand drive so I could adjust the steering because you couldn't quite get a, a direct socket onto it so when you get these cheapy spanners don't be afraid of warming them up and bending them so the next step is we've got to take this cap off so I'm just going to give it a tap and that's not going to work so I think what we have to do is put an allen key in there which we do and uh, try and extract that when we've got the right size all these are allegedly metric so you turn it backwards you turn it like you tighten it up so let's turn this that should there we go again 
We're not using any special tools. When you reassemble this, you have to be really careful. Do not damage the ring. And there goes the oil. There we go, an absolute bloodbath of oil. Now I'm looking at this, and I'm going to show this to the place I bought it from. This is supposed to be a remanufactured unit. I have very little confidence in it. And this is why I say to buy new ones. See this corrosion behind there? Can you see that? Look at all that corrosion. This is supposed to be a new unit. I think we're going to have to strip it all down and have a look. So the next thing I'm going to do is see what happens for the next stage and then we'll do another section. So after a short break I'm back again. Um, so now we can put, if we can see inside here, we can see that this is over this way. Now we have to turn the shaft so this comes into the middle and we do that with a we just use a simple pair of vice grips on that spline. Move it back, if it will. Probably it won't. That's not good. These might do. There we go. Then we have to turn that one as well at the same time. It had gone out of mesh. There we go, you can see that's moving now. You have to push down the, the rack that's inside, it was a little bit difficult thing to get to. So by turning that, we've now got this in this position. You've just got to be careful because there's a bit of cast in there, so we, we'll, we'll turn it a bit more just so we can, we're sure we can get that piece out. And then that should... No it won't. You have to keep turning it a bit more. Well, I can turn it with my hands now. Dear me. Is this going to come out? There we go. That's it. That's come out now. So there we go. And that's come out. And one of the things we've got to watch when you, when you do strip a, uh, a box is we've got to look for any wear on here, this is most important. Um, this has been reground, so it's pretty good. So that's okay, we can use that again. The bearing in there is good. So we're going to pop that into that nice clean box. And I don't know if we need to take anything else apart to, to get to the piece that we're after. We're after this bit. So I'm going to have a look at the, uh, the manual, now it's all covered in oil, and see what we have to do next. Well the next bit was to pull this piston out. We use a 10mm bolt, put it into there. I'm going to keep that in so we can put it back in. You can see where they've put grease on, trying to put it in, so the, it has been to, to bits and it has sort of been rebuilt. So the next bit... Oh, damn, oil everywhere again, look at this. Everywhere. Just try and be prepared for, for all the oil coming out. So next thing, we're going to take this, this out, and this is the bit we need. So we need our little punch. Where that go? Here it is. We need a hammer. Where did that go? Off here. And we take this off. That, that, that's off. We've already knocked that off a bit earlier. And then we're going to unscrew this piece. We're going to use this method here. It's not the perfect thing, but it will do. Because this is just an adjuster. And it looks a bit primitive and a bit crude. But it does work. I have a proper tool. I'm going to try and find it. Oh, sorry, I'm in the way there. So there we go. We're just unscrewing this nut. Get this out. There we go. We're going to put that in the box. Wipe your hands again. And 
then, I've got one here, just a second. I'm going to get my hammer. So with a rubber mallet, now this should pop out. And this is the bit we're after. Just put your hand on the end so the bearing doesn't drop on the floor and wiggle this out. So we're going to put the bearing, which is in good condition, up to there. And this is the bit I was concerned about. You see, why was oil coming out of here? So for now, well I can't get any more oilier. So I'm going to move this out of the way, have a bit of a clean up. There we go. Get rid of all that. And now I'm going to wash this piece off. I'm going to wash everything off. And then I'm going to find out why oil leaked into here. I think I might be in for a bit of a surprise. All right. So after washing this off and taking the paint off here and inspecting this, there is a pin that goes through the end and inside there there's some there's something else in there that I can't quite see because there's a there's something in the end here that's not mach that's machined separately so I've got a feeling that this is hollow well it is hollow because there's another piece inside there so I think that pin holds this shaft together now normally you don't have to do this, it does, it's not recommending you take this apart. But if you can reckon, um, remember that I had hoi, oil, not oil, I had oil coming through here. As if to say there's an oil seal stopping oil getting out of there. So I'm going to have a go, I've got nothing to lose with this. But I'm going to measure up the diameter of that pin to make sure... It's not a ta it could be a taper pin. I'm not sure. I've never seen one before. The condition of the the worm, this is called the worm, is, is quite good. It's, uh, in, it's in fact it's very good. So I really don't know. I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to drill this out. I've got nothing to lose. Um, and we'll, we'll get back to you because I, I think this is a, we could fix this pretty quickly. So after an absolute royal messing about, I went down to see my friend at a machine shop because I couldn't get this pin out. I couldn't get it out on my own. <clears throat> it turns out that it's a hardened steel parallel pin um, and it's a really tight fit into here. I mean, we had a bugger of a job trying to get it out. We damaged a spline or two, but I think we'll be all right. We'll just file it up a bit. It'll be good. But I know now that uh, how to get these out and I know what's in there. Just inside here, there's a shaft that runs all the way through here. Um, and this piece goes right into here. There's a gear in the end of it. It's quite interesting how it's made actually. Um, so we fitted the pin flush on one side just like it was. And there was a little o-ring inside here that had been caught or damaged through assembly. So, I think we're going to save it. I think it'll be safe. Well, it is safe because this pin only just stops that shaft moving backwards and forwards. There's an actual drive spline right down at the bottom. So, I'm going to clean everything up. And then the next video will start to put things back together again.